Hello, friends. It's Nancy with On Point TV. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm hoping everybody can hear and everything can be seen all right. I can't really see on my computer yet, so hopefully everything's working out great. Thank you very much for joining me. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you might recall that we did an entire series on one of my new books, which is Sunset Over Dublin. Now, this book has 37 blocks, instructions for 37 blocks, lots of half square triangles and flying geese and set in seams and a lot of different techniques. And so we did an entire series. I think there were, were there 16, Athena? Yeah. I think maybe about 16 or so episodes, taking you through the techniques used in all of the blocks. So here is just there. That's kind of what the inside of the book looks like. So very, very detailed instructions. We called it Sunset Over Dublin because Antonia is one of our fans and she helped me beta test the pattern and she's from Dublin. So we thought that was a cool name. So today we're going to finish the series. I know better late than never, right? We never quilted it. We got all the way through. We even did the last one um, episode that we did was on the basting of the twin size version, which is what I'm going to be quilting on. I did put the queen size version is back here, but I obviously don't have enough space to hang the whole thing. So she's just hanging out on my mannequin. So today I want to take you through just a few of the techniques that I'm going to use for the free motion quilting. All right. Keep in mind, Sunset Over Dublin is on our website, which is on point dash TV. Dot com. That's where you can get all of my books and things like that. So let's put that aside. Oh, see, now I can see us. Um, all right, there we go. Somebody is here from Lincoln Park, as in Lincoln Park, Michigan. I think I used to live there. All right, so we're going to start by quilting the border. And so as always, what I do before I'll start quilting is I'll start drawing. Because the truth of the matter is, if you can draw it, you can quilt it. So this is the border. So this would be the chevron and this is the black part. And we're going at uh oh. Wait, wait, wait. Did we? I think we're coming back. Oh, we might come back. Oh my goodness. Um we might have lost internet. We have so much trouble with the internet around here. I can't even tell you. So let's see, are we back? Nothing else is happening. Oh no. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We're back. We're back. Okay, we're back. You're back. Okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> so that's how we're going to do the border. We're not seeing that we're back, but we are trusting you, Marlies. I hope I'm saying your name right. The next thing I'm going to quilt is going to be the chevron. And what I decided to do is a single sided open feather. So the open feathers are going to look like this. And just like the loop de doos, these are going to graduate in size so that it'll get to the big one in the middle, kind of a medium one here, a little one here, and then come back to a medium and a big and oops i'm doing something wrong i you what i want to do is i want all of these to end on that line that i told you about so as i'm going up it'll come right to that line and then i'll be back to my little one so that is how i intend to quilt the border and i'm going to use two threads so let's get that started so to start with although mine's not playing there okay now it's playing yeah okay we're back to start with this is what i put on my hands i'm not usually a fan of the gloves if you like wearing the quilting gloves go for it wear the quilting gloves i like this sort quick which you might find in an office mac somewhere but i know a more convenient place for you to get it is at firesidequilts.com that is the website owned by my friend laura right here in grand rapids also and what it does is it opens up and is kind of egg shaped. And so it's really cool because you can do your entire hand right on top of it. Now, this is the same stuff that, you know, clerks um, use for sorting money. I don't get to sort money, but instead I use it for quilting. Okay. Sort quick. Now, I oh, well, is it coming back? 
Is coming back. Yes, you are right. We lost you. Lo we lost you again. I'm so sorry. We have the worst internet. You've known that I've had to cancel entire events because of the internet. I was once doing a Zoom class for Road to California. Sure enough, I lost my internet. Problem is we can only work with one company. We can't work with the other company because we live on the outskirts of town. And so I'm not going to name names, but man, it really makes me mad. They are not. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, this is in my bobbin. This is the bottom line thread from Superior. We are back, right? You think? Okay. Bottom line thread, 60 weight in my bobbin. In the top, I'm going to start with the So Fine. This is the matte finish polyester thread, also from Superior. Um, it's actually made as a garment thread. It's an exceptionally strong garment thread or tote thread. If I'm doing garments and totes, that's usually what I'm working to. So we're going to start here. And the truth is, on this one, you probably are not going to see what I'm quilting. Um, I've got my big, powerful light here. Athena's moving in, but you're not going to be able to see. But I'll just do a little bit so you get the idea. Here is where I'm going to start. I did just put a brand new bobbin in, so I need to bring my bobbin thread to the top. Yes, it does start, start and stop. That's because of our internet. Sorry about that. So I have pulled up my bottom thread. So it was real, you know, I'm going to do that again. People are always asking about that. Okay. So this is where I want to start right here, going into position, going to put my needle down, my needle up. Now bring the quilt forward and you can see my bobbin thread. Now it is a light color. Um, this machine gets really good tension. I oftentimes tell you not to do high contrast, but in this case, this seems to be working quite well. So now I'm going to drop my, watch your toes, please. Yeah, okay, there we go. And lost my pedal. All right. So working with my needle in the down position, I'm going to start. Now keep in mind, I have the power on this machine that I literally could go oh, 30 times faster if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I don't have to go pedal to the metal to get the stitch length I need. This is literally the slowest speed this machine has, and I just put my foot pedal all the way down, and I know that my, pen, my speed is going to be consistent. Coming to the corner here is going to be a little trickier. I'm going to do a small one and then another one into this corner. Come up with a loop-de-loop -loop at the top. And I'm going to do a big one. You can actually see it. Then a little one. And then go back into the loop-de-loop -loop pattern. So I think, I think this is you guys can see it. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad. And that's the idea. As I come to the end, I'm going to take teeny stitches, like five or six teeny stitches in a row, and cut my thread. So there you go. That is the black border. Now I'm going to now look at the bobbin, look at the back and see how my bobbin looks. Actually, it looks pretty darn good. Right? You really can't see anything there. So it, I know it keeps going on and off, but can somebody tell us if we're actually on now? We think we are. Yep. So that's what my bobbin, my backing is. And my backing is this really cool old Riley Blake with these zombies. Love that. All right. Athena's going to back up a little bit and we're going to go to our next color. So for the next color, with my press foot, I need to change threads. And I'm going to use a shiny polyester for this one. So this is a Floriani embroidery thread. These are a 40 weight embroidery thread. Really, really shiny. And these work great for quilting. I once had a um, viewer say that she didn't know that you could use embroidery thread in quilting. Oh, yes, you can. Um, back in the day, embroidery thread used to mostly be rayon. Well, in that case, yes, you could still do the quilting in it, but rayon is not obviously going to be as strong as a polyester. Um, so now most embroidery is done with these um, color fast polyester threads. Let me get this in here. Oops. We are loud and clear from Northern California. All right. All the way to California. Awesome. There. Okay. So, yes, you can use your embroidery threads in quilting. I love it because, like, there's so many colors, just mass quantities of colors. All right. So now it's time to do the feathers. So this is a single-sided open 
feather. And you can see, I think, really well on the yellow how it looks. So let's begin that. Now, in this case, my bobbin is already been cut. It's going to be too short, so I probably can't bring the bobbin up, but I do want to get that thread underneath my presser foot because this particular presser foot is the type that doesn't have an opening in the front, and that's just because that's the kind of machine that I have. All right. Excellent in Newfoundland. Wow. How cool is that? We love your dogs. We love your dogs. We just got done watching the Westminster dog show. It was so cool. All right. So again, working with my needle in the down position, going to take teeny stitches to start, and I'm going to do graduated feathers. Now, the tricky part here is that the bigger the feather, the more likely it is that you are going to try to go too fast around that feather. So work really hard to keep your speed consistent. Keep in mind, I know that our internet has dropped out a couple of times. So if you lose us again, just hang on. We'll come back and try to figure out how to fix the video when we actually post it to the whole entire world to see. Hopefully they don't have to deal with our internet issues. So now I'm going to do the medium. So consistent speed is the key. So my machine is set to its lowest speed and I am just moving my hands. You always want your hands to kind of be forming a hoop around the area that you are quilting. And you can also see where it's sort of puffy looking, but when I get the quilting done, then it just puts it right down. Now, quilts just happen to never, ever, 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 ever be perfectly flat which is a good thing because that would not be very comfortable to sleep under. Um, so you're always going to get a little bit of puff, but don't worry about it. You can always quilt down things. I just taught a free motion quilting class the other day at the store I teach at here in Grand Rapids. And the first thing I asked them is, are any of you a type A perfectionist kind of person? And a couple of people raised their hands. I'm like, well, get over that now, because there is no perfection in art, and there is definitely no perfection in free motion quilting. We just want to make it look pretty, and there's, the guarantee that I can give you is that you'll get better and better every time. So that's how this border would be done, taking my tiny stitches. Now I'm going to cut my thread and pull it out. Now, when this one comes to the corner, I guess I didn't realize I was so close to the corner. Maybe I could have just done it. But the idea is I would go with that small feather, and then I would come with a large feather to get it in this side, then a smaller one and a smaller one, then come to the other side and do a smaller, medium, and large one. And then I'd be back into my graduated sizing again. Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you very much, Betty. All right, the next thing we're going to quilt is the sashings. Now, yep, right, oh, you know what? Yeah, we do, because I need to change threads. So what I've chosen to do in the sashings is first, you know, I should have covered this first already. The very first thing I ever do quilting when I'm doing the quilting is the edge of my inside border. So there is a straight line that you probably can't see yeah. I do it on the ledge. I do not do it in the ditch right here. It's about a 16th to an 18th of an inch on top of that inner border. That keeps my quilt square. Then I go throughout the quilt and do stabilizing quilting. And in this case, the stabilizing was going around each one of the sashings. And I did do that pre-motion. If I were going to try to do that with a walking foot, it would be beyond a pain. So I started here, went around again on the ledge, around the sashings. Then I went into one that was next to it. And then I could cut my thread and continued on. Right now, I'm going to quilt for you the circles that I put in there. So again, I need to change my thread. I do love changing threads. Well, okay, that's not true. I don't love changing threads, but I do love using lots of different threads in a quilt, especially something like this. This thread is, again, from Superior, and it was their brights. I've probably had this for four or five years, maybe. This is a 30-weight thread. 
the thickest of the threads I'm going to use. The other ones have been um, 40 weights. So the bit smaller the number, the thicker the thread. So in this machine, I am able to keep my tension the same. I don't have to change my tensions. I also am probably not going to have to change my needle. And I'll tell you what needle I'm going to use here in a second. Um, some machines, you need to change the tension. You need to change the needle you're going to use. But with the needle that I use, which is an 80 top stitch needle, and I'm, I'm in the process of kind of testing out these chrome ones from um, Schmetz. They are, I don't know, professional grade. Maybe I just bought them because it said they were professional grade, and I want to be a professional when I grow up. So that's what I've been testing, and they work pretty good. I don't know that I think, I don't know if they work better. I, I don't think I have a comparison to kind of, you know, how would I compare one to the other? Um, the threads aren't breaking any more than normal. Um, tensions are good. So, you know, I think everything's good on there. All right, so if you're the camera is bumping, it's because my extra large cat RC is bumping, rubbing right next to Athena's legs. <laughs> and he's 25 pounds, which honestly, she doesn't weigh too much more than that. So, all right, right here at the beginning again, I am going to bring my bobbin thread up. I see I can't bring the bobbin thread up because it was cut. So I'm going to see, I'm gonna grab my scissors real quick. I would like to get my thread to be below this foot, uh, but I might not be able to. Uh, let's see. And just as I tell you that the threads are going to work great, Should this one started thread. Cat? No, don't show them the cat. People okay. will judge me. Okay. I think that fat cats are beautiful. That's all there is to it. Oh, my goodness. I just thought, you know, while you're doing that. While I'm messing around. Yeah. Truth is, is Keena, Athena's a cat whisperer, so she always wants to show you pictures of the cats. And I know everybody else likes cats, too. All right, so I'm going to start here, and I'm going to do four circles. Now, you could draw dividing lines in there so that your circles were ish about the same size. But all of these blocks are an eight inch block. So I'm going to go, all right, if I can do two within this section and two within that section, then they would be mm, even, right? Let's give it a try. So my teeny stitches to start, work with the needle in the down and do a circle. Then come all the way around to the bottom, which is toward me, and do another circle. Now come all the way around to the top and do a circle. Got to move my hands here. And then come all the way down to the bottom and do a circle. And now, because I'm right next to this other sashing, I'm going to cross over that intersection and do a little bit more of the same. I'm going to pull my quilt up. It's getting stuck. So now I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. All the way to the top. Consistent speed. You see, I'm trying my best to move in a consistent speed. So when you do your prep work for this, and you're drawing your designs, I recommend that you really try drawing with a consistent speed too. So I'm gonna do tiny stitches right there to the edge, and ta-da! Oops, my thread didn't quite cut because it, oh, there, it did cut. All right, it is pretty thick, okay? So there you go, that's how I've done the sashings. So let's move on to some of the blocks. So with the next block, it's on here somewhere. This is the drawing pad that I use. This is going to be the block that I'm going to um, quilt, which if I can find it on the quilt, that sometimes is harder. It's on here somewhere, so we'll find it. But I kind of colored it because I want to show you, I probably won't quilt the entire thing. But if you look, actually, Athena, can you show them this block? If you look at this block, this is the idea of the quilting, whereas these, um, all of these different triangles. And the idea is you're going to do a continuous curve that goes around the seam allowance. So there's the seam, and this curve goes out about a quarter of an inch and comes back. But the trick is to do the entire block as one fast or one continuous design. So if you look at the drawing, this is what I'm going to do. I always like to start here. I'll do it here. 
start in a corner and then go to the next intersection of the block. And in this case, because this one has these long yellow sections, I'm gonna do them as one piece. I'm gonna pretend that that seam allowance isn't there. So I'm gonna just do this section right here. Then I'm gonna bop to the next section, just do this intersection there, then I'm gonna bop to the yellow. And this is where I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna take and go starting at the point and then come about a quarter of an inch from this intersection. This is the same way that I'm gonna do a Lemoyne star, which I'm gonna quilt for you also, and a Lone Star. And then I'm gonna cross to the other side, then come back up, cross to the left-hand one and over. Then I'm gonna crisscross to the next yellow and back again. Once I get to the center, I think it's gonna be best for me to do these red triangles. So that means I'm gonna bop around each of the red triangles. And I've never actually done this block, so this is a good test for me to see if I can actually do it in one continuous motion. All right, so I'm here, so now I'm gonna finish this other side of the yellow, um, and then I'm gonna go on the square. All right, yep, okay, this is working out okay. Here, here, and this is, it's kind of fun. I find it a little bit hypnotic, like I'm forgetting that you guys are sitting at home and do you really have to watch me draw this whole thing? Maybe, maybe not. All right, one more. So that's the idea. That's how I'm going to draw, quilt this particular block. I do need to change threads. So I hope you guys like the drawing part of it. I think it's kind of fun. Um, if you've never done the drawing, when I teach in my class, I talk about doing Zen tangles. Zen tangles is, it's, it's a Zen. It's like, ah, and it creates Zen. And the idea is for doodle drawing that creates Zen. If you're an artist, then whatever the art is that you do, usually, hopefully, creates Zen for you. Well, as a quilter, instead of Zen, free motion quilting usually calls, causes angst in people more than anything else. They get really, really nervous, not quite sure what to do. Oh my goodness, what's going on? Am I doing the right design? Am I doing the design right? Um, raise your hand if this is you, right? So I would like you to consider trying Zen tangles. Because if you can draw your quilting designs, you can quilt your quilting designs. And doing Zen tangles is a great way to practice your quilting designs. And it does bring Zen. Maybe not as much as a glass of wine, but a glass of wine is not always a good thing for everybody. But that Zen feeling is really important when you're doing free motion quilting. All right, so let me find this said block that we were gonna do. It's, it's, it's gotta, be, oh, there it is, right there. Okay, this is the block that we're going to quilt. Now, since I have quilted everything else around it, this one is seems a little bit puffy, but don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. I can use my hands to move things out. So I'm going to start, oops, I'm a little bit twisted here. Don't run over Athena's toes. Uh-oh, do you see that my thread is twisting around my needle? That would have been a very short trip. All right, so I'm going to start in this little corner. I'm going to try to get my... Oops, I'm sorry, Athena. I have to grab my scissors, which are... Oh, goodness, great. Oh, there they are. Of course, they're right in front of me. I want to grab them so that I can bring this top thread to be underneath my foot. All right, so I'm going to start here with my needle in the down position and take my teeny stitches. Is the quilt getting in the way? No, you're fine. Okay. I just... And I'm gonna use my hands to spread the block so that it'll be nice and flat. So I'm gonna first go over to that next section and now I'm gonna go down and back here. I'm not gonna continue into the yellow because remember I wanna do that yellow section all as one. Now I'm going to come across to the next one, and I'm going to go down and back on this one, although now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, maybe I should have made that black one all as one, too. Oh, well, live and learn. Now I'm coming to the point of the yellow, 
and I'm going to start that whole thing that I was going to do in the middle. So I'm going to come here all the way to the middle and then cross over to the other section of yellow. Now I'm right in the middle. And I can cross right over. Come to that point. Come back to the middle. For those of you that are wondering, in the construction, I talk a lot about the pinwheels and the center of the pinwheels. Doing the seam separating technique makes it possible to quilt in the middle of that pinwheel. If you're not doing the seam separating technique, it can be very, very bulky and not very fun to quilt right in the center. Now I'm going to crisscross all the way over to the other side. Come back to the middle. Now I'm going to do the red sections, kind of doing those triangles. And I am using, this is a dark green Floriani polyester thread. Still working with that, um, my bottom line in the bottom. And since it's polyester, I can use it for all of these different polyester threads on top. Okay, now I'm going to finish out the yellow. Go around the corner of the blue. On down on either side of this seam. So this is where I was wondering, should I? Yeah, I think I will. I am going to stitch down that seam because it's all one, you know, the black is kind of considered one piece there, even though it's a square and a half square triangle. I thought about it. All right. Blue. Now this looks a little bit puffy here, so I'm really working with my hands to help keep the fabrics from being pleated. It looks like I'm getting a little teeny tiny pleat right here. Oh, not bad at all. You know, that's the wonders of working with the free motion foot is those little things. If you try doing something like that with your walking foot, that fabric is just going to bunch forward and you'll end up with pleats and other not so fun things in your block. Right. There we go here. Again, this is kind of puffy. But you see how it just kind of works itself around the free motion foot kind of pushing everything down as it goes instead of pushing it forward like when you're using your walking foot. Just about done with this block. Now I'm going to do one more thing. Do you see how I've not done around these edges here? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go back around the entire quilt. Our entire block. Okay, so we'd be here all night. I hope you can see how flat the block looks now. So those of you that maybe were a little concerned, thinking that I was going to have a puffy block, I hope that your concerns are all now relieved. All right. Oh, my thread is breaking. I, all right. I, I noticed yep. a sound. Right there, there was a sound. So I'm going to have to re-thread this. But that's the idea going all the way around. So let's cut that thread off and take a look at that. So now look at how flat that block is. And I like the way that this makes these yellow guys, it makes them into one piece. And since they are so bright and I'm using a dark colored thread, I thought it was pretty important to make them be one continuous piece. Well, the next block, which I'm not going to quilt because my thread broke and I could thread it. I mean, I'm capable. Whoops. Uh, just Shar is asking what kind of sewing machine. This Shar is a 12-year-old Faf Hobby Grand Quilter. Um, 12 years ago, I bought this baby. They don't even make it anymore. And it was not made by Faf. Faf or Husqvarna Viking, because there was a um, Husqvarna Viking version, they called it a mega quilter. I think it's made by Juki or Janome. Um, they don't make one like this anymore. Now, if you look at the Jukis and Janome kind of ones that are this quilting style, they have all those extra stitches. 
Well, the truth is, is when it comes to free motion quilting, do you need those extra stitches? No, you do not. You just want a strong, powerful machine that's got the extra space. So there are machines now available that have more space than this that are made for just free motion quilting. But I'm waiting for those to have a thread cutter. None of those have a thread cutter yet that are tabletop models um, that just have this kind of thing without costing gazillions and gazillions of dollars. So that's what I have. All right. So this is the Lemoyne Star. I'm not going to actually quilt it, but I'm going to draw it for you. So with the Lemoyne Star, it's going to be very similar to what I just did. And then I'm going to start in the corner. And right now, there it is. Now I'm back into my diamonds, right? So I'm going to do that same kind of thing where you cross. Now I'm going to cross over, go to the next block, diamond rather, cross over, go to this one over here. It doesn't really matter which one you go to next as long as you're crisscrossing over at some point. Back to here. Then, oops, oops, right from here. Got to know where you're going. That's a little wide. Hopefully I wouldn't have done that. Then I would go around it this way. Almost there, hang in there with me. Because after I go all the way around it, oops, I would have stopped here. So this is a friction. Yes, this is a friction pen. A new friction felt tip marker, which loving that because you can really see the line and I can erase the boo-boos. Then before I go all the way up there, then I would want to go around the inside of the block like I just did on that last one so that each of these squares was quilted. And it is, it's a trick. It's a game. I like, you know, little drawing games. And this is that idea, you know, can you do this entire design without lifting your pen? Zoom. Just like that. So that's how I would quilt the Lemoyne Star, which is right here. And I think that makes it done. I think that we have then quilted everything that we have. The, let me see, the only other thing would be the um, setting triangles in this case. And in this case, I just did straight lines. So I started here and just free motioned a straight line, crossed over, went up, over, and like this. And that's because this particular fabric had kind of a, you know, a linear design to it. I was going to say a line kind of design, but I think linear makes me sound more intelligent, doesn't it? So done. All right. So my next step with this quilt will be to finish the quilting, obviously, and then put the pipe binding on. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a pipe binding, but I do think I'm going to, I'm going to do it with a black binding. And then the pipe, I'm going to do this cool, like pink, yellow um, that I'm using in the sashing. I thought that would look pretty cool all the way around it. I won't do a video on that because we just did a video on a pipe binding just a few months ago. So you can take a look back at that one if you would like to. Done. That was kind of painless, wasn't it? Bill's waiting with some pizza and wine upstairs for us. I'm pretty excited about that. If you like the video, please give us a thing that's like, thumbs up, Nancy. Give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, don't give me a thumbs down. Just stop watching. And if you'd like to leave some comments and share, Athena says share. Please share the, my videos with your quilting friends. I do have a membership available. You can find out more about that below. Keep in mind, I have to put that information below. It's not there right now. Um, so if you're interested in the membership, you can find out more information about that there. I think that's all. All right. Thanks again for watching. Have a great night.